Yo, this is you, bro. I'm Tonya, and along with my friends Phil and Brian, we're taking a road trip through Illinois. What a better road than Route 66, baby. Join us as we unplug, hit the road, and meet amazing people as we go. Yeah, Our time in Chicago was a blast, but we're ready to hit the open road and really see what Route 66 is all about. Our next adventure takes us from Joliet to Bloomington, starting with the old Joliet prison, a site with a storied past that's as intriguing as it is haunting. Whoa, look at this place. This is huge. I want to see what it looks like inside. Looks so eerie. Talk about historic. I don't want to go in. I'm scared. Good morning, guys. Welcome to the old Joliet Prison Historic Site. Hi, I'm Brian. Man. My name's Greg Pierbolt. Nice I'm the CEO you. of the Joliet Area Historical Museum. Are we able to go on a tour? Yes, I would love to show you around. Yeah, OK. <laughs> The site closed in 2002 as a prison, and from there it sat abandoned for about 15 years. And what our organization, leading a wider community effort, argued was that the site has defined us for so many years. Let's redefine it. The best part of the story is the part where the community stepped in and reclaimed the site into a community space and a center of learning. Who is able to visit this site? Anyone can come to the site. We have visitors from around the block and around the world all ages, and we welcome anyone to come in and learn more about the impact and history of incarceration in our country. Can we go into the jail cells? Sure. Don't close the door behind you. <laughs> Can we just leave them in here? Is that all right? <laughs> you are welcome to explore the site at your own pace and on your own timeline. Enjoy. All right, guys, let's go ghost busting. Who you going to call? I'm going this way. All right, so this is solitary confinement. Look at that right here, man. It's no joke. You just feel, oh man, it's scary. But it's okay. No, it's not okay. I don't know why I said that. It is never too late to mend and turn negatives into positives and develop a site that benefits and is a site of education and conscience. Okay, so guys, check this out. I'm happy that you guys came here on Route 66 with me, but I want to know, when you were in the UK, have you ever heard of Route 66? I've heard about it quite a lot through music, films. I feel like it's an American rite of passage that people do. Before I came on, I did a little bit of research. I realized that this was the mother road. It was the first road that was able to connect the east to the west. And I was like, man, America is always so steeped in so much history. To be able to drive down Route 66, I was like, I got to be a part of that. Man, that's what's up. Now, that's called getting your kicks on Route 66. I agree, man. Route 66 has a global appeal and impact, attracting people from all over the world since its inception. Just like the Amber Texaco gas station, physical landmarks preserve an idyllic history all up and down the route, leaving lasting reminders of what travel looked like almost 100 years ago. I thought gas stations like this only existed in the movies. Yeah. Welcome to Illinois, land of Lincoln. <laughs> this nostalgia and careful style of road tripping didn't necessarily look the same for everyone. Phil, you're from the Midwest. What has your experience been like going down Route 66? All my family traveled to Route 66. And it's dope that I finally get to travel so freely because they weren't able to back in the day. They used to have to have this book called the Green Book. I'm sure you heard of it, right? Mm -hmm. So the Green Book, it was a safety guide because there were towns you couldn't go to, but the Green Book let you know, can't go to this town, sundown town. There were gas stations that didn't accept black people. It was a cheat code. And that, that helped with safety and it empowered people to travel. And that was more of the American dream. So we felt more involved in America because we were able to buy a car and travel as well, like every American. And it's dope that we're able to do it so freely right now, you know what I'm saying? We're reflecting on the past and we're gonna inspire the future because we're doing it with sustainability, EV, traveling, you feel me? You don't even have to put gas in the car. Not even no gas through the car, we're breaking barriers, baby. Since our Rivian is gas-free, we decided to charge up across the road from our next destination. Some power is ready. The Route 66 Hall of Fame. 
Let me get the door for y'all, cause y'all in my country. Thank you, sir. Thanks. You're welcome, ladies. <laughs> Featuring thousands of artifacts and memorabilia all related to this historic road, this museum is considered to be the mother load of the mother road. Hi. Any questions? Philip. Any questions, Philip? Hi. Tony. Hi. How are you? Hi, I'm Brian. Brian. Dave, this bus over here has me so curious. There's so many things going on in here. Can you just come over here and explain a few things for me? Bob Waldmeyer was this hippie artist he would sell his art and travel this around so on cool. Route 66 from Chicago to Arizona. Wow. He was just phenomenal. This place is truly special. It is. It is. Thanks for coming, Brian. Thank you. Open roads mean plenty of open space, and open space usually means farms. Lots and lots of farms. So we decided why not stop and check out a few. I'm gonna show y'all how good Midwestern cheese is. You know me, I love, love cheese. Let's see what kind of cheese they got. Let's see what kind of goats those are, let's see. Oh, can we see them? <laughs> Let me introduce myself, I'm Brian. Hey Brian, I'm Ken Rob. Nice to meet you guys. So goats eat eat leaves? They'll eat anything. All right, buddy, you wanna eat some of this grass? Are... Don't eat my head. Oh, <laughs> they're not gonna do anything to you. But look, at, I ain't never fed a goat. <laughs> do you want some of the bronze? No. Yeah, let me hold a brand. <laughs> There you go. I can see that there's a cheese shop. Would you say you have the tastiest cheese on Route 66? By far. Yeah. By far. <laughs> Would you guys like to see the baby calves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right, Come let's on. head on over. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> so when it comes to what we do here on the farm, it's kind of the story of sustainability as it is with the windmills. Not only do we milk the cows, we make the cheese, we package the cheese, deliver it, but that product goes into various restaurants in town where it's really a full circle of life. It's sustainability at its best. And it um, moves us on. And it's really <laughs> good. This is our number one seller. You can taste that it's not processed. It's all done by hand. And so it makes a big difference. Anyone on Route 66 can stop by and try. After enjoying some freshly made cheese, we're ready for more. Just down the road from Rock Jersey Cheese is a group at the forefront of the movement, putting the farm in farm to table. Welcome to Epiphany Farms. Hey, how you doing, man? So we just came from Rock Farm and they recommended us to come here. Yeah, great people. Yeah. Been in the area for a long time, been big fans and you know, we got a lot of collaboration between all the local producers here in Central Illinois. That's awesome. You heard that you have a Farm to table experience? Yeah, yeah, we're uh, a group of chefs. We have four restaurants here locally in Bloomington, Illinois. Uh, this is our 70 acre estate where we raise all the vegetables, the chickens, we have some pigs, we have laying hens, a little bit of everything for the farm. You guys wanna go check out the rest of the farm? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. This is a new variety of cherry tomato. It's this beautiful, big orange cherry tomato. The thing about it is these clusters will have almost 26 tomatoes, up to 26 tomatoes on them. Um, so what motivated you to start this farm? I was a chef in Las Vegas, and I just saw this huge growing disconnect between our menus and the ingredients that we're using and the guests that were dining in our restaurant. And I felt like instead of trying to be a fine dining chef that's scouring the globe for rare resources, I was like, how would I come back home and actually create a sustainable farm to showcase it in our menus and our dining room tables to impact change, to be something that the future hasn't seen yet, which is something that's really regenerative and sustainable and organic. We need more of this. Yeah. Route 66 comes right through the heart of Illinois and this farm is located really close to it. And so we have a lot of tourists visit this state to explore this route and we get to benefit from them coming through our area and enjoying our restaurants and our food and stopping at our farm. Homegrown. Yeah, that's for sure. That's man. what's Thank up, you. man. As we wrap up our day at Epiphany Farms restaurant, we reflect on the incredible experiences and the inspiring people we've met. Listen guys, this has been such a fantastic way to end our second day. Here's to a great day and a great rest of the trip down Route 66. Our journey on Route 66 continues with more iconic locations and stories ahead. See you on the road.